Christ, the solid rock we stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah, we come today to give honor to God. We give honor to Jesus, who is the Christ, and we honor the Holy Spirit that leads and guides us into all truth. We want to honor Bishop Anthony C. Muse today. I'm sorry, C. Anthony Muse. <laughs> First Lady Elder Pat Lawson Muse, the entire Ark family, my husband, and all of you, the saints of the Most High God. Truly, it is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Isn't it good for us to be able to fellowship together one more time? Because we recognize it could have been another way if God had not been on our side, if he had not been our rock, we might not be here today living and breathing and praising and glorifying his holy and righteous name. Hallelujah. I will not be before you long, I pray, just as long as the Holy Spirit leads and guides. I would like to call your attention uh, to the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. We will be reading for your hearing uh, the first eight verses. We'll begin at verse eight and conclude at verse one and con conclude at verse eight. Let us notice the reading of the text. To everything, there is a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. Thus ends God's anointed and blessed word. For a subject today, I would like to use season reasons. Let us pray, gracious and eternal Father. Lord, we come before your presence, O oh God, recognizing, O oh Lord, that I am just your earthen vessel. Pray, God, that you would, O oh Lord, move by the power of your might. Send the Holy Spirit to preach to your people, teach to your people, encourage your people on today, O oh God, for truly we all need to hear from you. Now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart May it be acceptable in your sight, for you are my Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer. Amen. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Reasons for the seasons and season reasons. There's a quote by an unknown author that says, and I quote, I have resolved to live, not just endure, each season of my life. End quote. There is, on the other hand, a very well-known scripture thought to be written by King Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived, found in our text today, and it simply yet profoundly says, for everything, there is a time and a season. But since that hasn't been definitely proven, we'll simply address him as the preacher, if that's all right. Ecclesiastes is a book most theologians conclude was written indeed by Solomon. It's a book of wise sayings 
that examine the meaning of life's endeavors, the value of common wisdom, and the problem of injustice. It addresses the times when life does not make sense, when it seems that wisdom cannot offer any satisfactory answers. And the preacher profoundly states, for everything, there's a time and a season. He takes an honest, fearless look at wealth and labor, pleasure and wisdom as ultimately being meaningless in and of themselves. But the book also concludes that realizing such limitations should encourage us to approach God with awe, with reverence, with amazement, with respect, and with admiration. In this passage, the preacher says there's a time for every matter in life. And he illustrates this truth by juxtaposing opposites, some of which I read, but in total, 14 pairs of contrasts as examples of how life is comprised of various seasons. Now, these can be thought of as just opposing opposites, but clearly the preacher includes everything that happens in between from one extreme to the next. Ecclesiastes is a journey. It begins with a prologue that introduces the preacher and his theme, life is mysterious and seems to make no difference at all. But an epilogue sums up the words of the teacher and the main lesson of his quest, fear God and obey his commandments. The idea of fearing God, that is to say, viewing him with reverence, respect, and awe, helps us to examine how our lives work and offers guiding principles for navigating life. As a result, we come to realize that while there are a variety of life seasons, we are always living in a season. But even more relevant for us is that we are able to determine which season it is that we're living in in order to embrace it and be reshaped through it. How many of us know the word of God will reshape you? So for a subject today, I'm using a, 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 a reason for seasons and season reasons because in chapter 3, the preacher focuses on the major method of living a life of relevance and meaning. Solomon calls us to embrace God's appointed seasons of life. We don't choose them. They come when God sends them. We cannot control the timing of most events, but we must be able to recognize the timing of them. It's a call for us to seek God who has appointed our times, so it's imperative that we seek him and his wisdom to successfully navigate his appointed seasons of life. We do that when we learn to trust in God's gracious providence. After calling us to embrace God's appointed seasons of life, uh, the preacher speaks of God's gracious providence over all of life. Thank you, Jesus. In other words, God's perfect governance over the entire universe. In the 11th verse, the preacher writes about God. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Therefore, life is not subject to random chance, but as purpose and meaning. Everything is under the authority and care and concern of God. That ought to make somebody happy today. I'm glad I don't make, have to make a lot of decisions for myself. I'm glad that the Holy Spirit leads and guides us into all truth. Paul wrote in Romans 8.28, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are the called according to his purpose. All things work together for good because God causes it to do so. Everything is beautiful in its time because it is according to God's appointed time. 
And this doesn't mean, however, that we'll understand it or even enjoy it, but it does mean that we receive it by faith. The question for us today is how do we practically apply this to our lives? Well, the preacher reminds us that every season of life has a purpose. We'll face times of great difficulty and times of great joy. We will experience seasons of hard work and seasons of pure pleasure and prosperity. God can and does use each of these seasons of life to teach us something about who he is, who we are, and how much he loves us. We may never fully understand what God has planned for us, but our attitude toward life changes when we learn to see God, good times and bad times as opportunities to grow closer to our Heavenly Father. As we journey through the seasons of life, we will experience countless ups and downs, ins and outs. I'm sure in your own life you have experienced the highs and the lows. And in fact, it is with certainty that somebody right now is going through something that feels like a roller coaster ride. Roller coasters go up and down and twist and turn and loop and plummet. A ride on a roller coaster is probably over in just a couple of minutes. And maybe for those two minutes, you hold on so tight. Your hands may almost feel numb when you get off. You laugh, you scream, you cry. Maybe you struggle to get your breath, and then it's over, and you're safe. You disembark from the roller coaster and stand on solid ground. Then one of two things usually happens. You head back to the end of the queue so that you can do it all over again. Or you vow never to ride a roller coaster again as long as you live. I have to admit, I fall in the latter category. But in all seriousness, we all experience ups and downs. Ups and downs in our lives. But as disciples of Jesus Christ, we don't face them on our own. God is with us. His promise to us is that he will never leave us or forsake us. God appoints times and seasons for every person and every time and in every single circumstance. In the events of our lives, the happy and the sad, the easy and the difficult, the good and the bad. But no need to worry. God both exalts and humbles us all at the same time. Not only that, but God raises the nations up and brings them down low. And these help us to remember that God is in control. The world is ever changing. Spring becomes summer, summer becomes fall, fall becomes winter, winter becomes spring, and then the whole thing happens all over again. The more things change, though, the more they stay the same. But our God never changes, and he has indeed set everything in time. If we put our trust in God, then whatever we're going through, whatever circumstance or situation we are in, whether we feel like we are deep in a valley of despair or on top of a mountain, in a good time or a bad time, we come to understand that we are always in some season that has a purpose for our lives. We can look at the seasons in our lives from two perspectives. The first is to look at our spiritual seasons through the lens of natural seasons. We'll start with the spiritual winter. In that we find Hebrews 9, 11, where it reads as thus, there remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter the rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. You see, in the natural, when we think of winter, we think of a time of rest. 
This is typically a time when things are not growing, they're not blooming outside, animals are hibernating, and if we're smart, we would take a cue from nature when God calls us into a spiritual winter. We shouldn't resist the rest because busy is not always productive as you think it is. We should welcome the opportunity to recharge. This is a good time to really hear from God on the direction and your next steps. You, you might be surprised how much more productive you can be when you are still in the Lord. When you allow the Lord to talk to you when you're not distracted by other people and other things, all types of miracles begin to happen in your life. You may feel restless or unsure because it's not the time to harvest or take action on the thoughts that God has shared with you, but you can be strategic about planning and getting yourself set for a bountiful spring. Take him up on his graciousness and rest in him. Rest in him during your spiritual winter, and then you'll be ready to spring into action. When the, your spiritual spring comes into play, we will understand that those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. You see, spring is like a breath of fresh air. There's just this new zest for life and an unstoppable feeling when we are in a spiritual spring. This is the time that we're planting those ideas that may have come to us during our winter and beginning to see the early stages of blossoms and warmth as our ideas begin to bloom through our relationships and through our connections. We are seeking God on our behalf in our spiritual spring. This is a season that we typically don't have a hard time trusting God at all. Spiritual summer comes, and Luke says, but the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and persevering produce a crop. Why does it? Why uh, would anybody think that nobody loves summer? Everybody loves summer. It's a time in the natural that we typically mix work and play together. It's a time to reap what planted, what we planted during our spiritual spring. It's a time to continue to work while making sure that we include refreshment and relaxation in our lives. It's a time for us to get rid of those weeds that we may want to, uh, that may want to pop up and get us distracted. If we limit our distractions, a spiritual summer can be very good for you. After summer comes fall and it's harvest time, the Lord will indeed give what is good and our land will yield its harvest. If you look at nature, this is typically a time of things falling away. This is when we see the temperature and leaves begin to change, which is how we know that fall is coming. It's a time when God might be calling some things to fall away in your life. Nature provides a great example of how this should look in our lives. Too often we hold on to things that could potentially cause problems in our next season. Spiritual fall usually causes us to look at the dead things in our lives, the unproductive, stifling things that hinder us from being all that God would have us to be. It's not by accident that God designed four different seasons. Everything with God is purposeful. And clearly our spiritual seasons do not always match up with the timing of nature's seasons. But the essence of the season is always there. Each season brings on change, new blessings and challenges. Just as the weather experiences different seasons, so do the seasons of our spiritual lives. What works in one season will not work in the other. 
and understanding what spiritual season you're in is essential to the growth of your faith and your relationship with God. Seasons remind us that Jesus Christ, the one who called us out of darkness into the marvelous light, is faithful and well-equipped to meet all of our needs. We all have struggles in life. We struggle with friendships and relationships. We struggle in marriage. We struggle in the workplace, and we struggle to raise our children. But these struggles are all seasons in our lives that with the help of God, Jesus, and the word, we learn to navigate through. Life is filled with mountains and valleys, crossroads and crisscrosses, but Jesus promises to never leave us nor forsake us. We'll go through all these seasons with the understanding that some are good and some are neutral and others are just downright bad. But each season provides us with a focus for prayer, a reason to meditate on the word and the determination to hear God's voice. And that brings us to our second perspective. Living through seasons is through the lens of our feelings or emotions. Everyone loves a happy season. And why wouldn't we? This is the easiest season to pray through because God has given us everything we need and want. We can praise him when everything in our lives is, in, is, is going well and God is blessing and showering us with favor. And we call on the name of the Lord and we say, Lord, we thank you and everyone is happy. But that's the season that's the easiest to bear. The grinding season on the other hand hand is of the other extreme. It is a busy season when you feel you just don't have enough time to accomplish all the things you have to do on your plate, all the to-do lists, if you will, but being busy does not mean that you are doing what God would have you to do. Sometimes we busy ourselves with the very wrong things. Uh, you might be just spinning your wheels going around and around and accomplishing absolutely nothing. Because this is a season to analyze your priorities and focus on outcomes as opposed to productivity. In this season, you might come to feel that your time of devotion and your time of prayer with God feels like just another thing on your list of things to do. Things are not necessarily working out right. They don't happen when you need them to happen. And you're not getting exactly what you want during this time. In this season, you have to be purposeful and determined not to simply go through the motions. This is a season when you have to push and push really hard. During this season, we should pray for peace and calm to get out of that grind, the chaos, and to relax in the arms of the Lord. There is the test and the trials season. This is the second hardest season of faith because it almost seems like God is trying to push you away because everything seems to be going wrong. In this time, uh, we read uh, the book of Job, and we can find comfort and confidence uh, that if he did it for him, he will surely do it for us. He lost everything. He faced everything, and he taught us how to love God through it all. During this season, uh, we have to pray for understanding as to why things are happening and for help bearing the cross that we must carry. Can I tell you, God doesn't just put us in predicaments because he has nothing else to do. There is a reason for every season. There's something in us that needs to come out, or there's something out that needs to go in. And God, in his infinite wisdom, knows exactly what we need. And because God knows what we need, we have to sometimes go through a spiritual warfare season. This is one of those difficult seasons because we constantly have something in the back of our minds trying to 
pull away from us the thoughts of God and the word of God. We are in a spiritual warfare where the enemy doesn't want us to do the right thing or feel the right way or have confidence in ourselves. It's hard to get through alone and we often fear we cannot ask for help and sometimes prayers during this time just don't seem to be answered quite soon enough. During this season, we have to pray for a closer relationship with God. You see, the last two are the waiting season and the dry season, which is where I want to talk today at a little length, just brief, just a little length, because they bring us the greatest lessons in our lives. The waiting season. Nobody likes to wait. We go to the grocery store, we don't want to wait on the line. We don't want to wait for a parking space. We don't want to wait for a movie ticket. But if we want it bad enough, we will wait. And we come to live out God's word, though, and, and comprehend that during this season, God's timing is not our timing. We all have expectations about how we think our lives ought to go. But we have to no guarantee that things will happen according to our plans or our expectations. It's, our t it's not our timing, but God's timing. Life crises never come at a convenient time and rarely ever resolve in a time frame that we would choose. It's a time when the reality of uh, we are not in control makes itself exceptionally clear. It is a season when we feel like we have nothing. And during these days, uh, months, or even years of uncertainty, we learn no matter how much we research, no matter how much we network, no matter how much we organize or plan, ultimate control belongs to God, and he will do what he knows is best for us. And so we learn to praise God anyhow. We praise him while we're waiting, even though we don't know how much longer we have to wait. We praise him because we recognize that he sits high and he looks low. We praise him because we understand that unlike people, he always has our best interests at heart. We praise him in this season of waiting because we know if we wait patiently on the Lord, all things will work together for our good. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Lord, I thank you for the waiting season. Is it easy? No, it's not easy. Sometimes we just have to wait. I, I had to wait for God to give me a job, and I want you to understand that was not an easy thing. I mean, you have bills to pay. You have food to buy. You have pampers to take care of and child care and all kinds of things that you have to handle. But can I tell you, when you wait patiently on the Lord, he will come through. And he never comes through in the way that we think he will, but when he comes through, as they used to say back in the day, he's always on time. Our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we can even think or imagine. We may be waiting for A, and God will bring us a, B, C, D, N, E. Why? Because we waited on him without interfering with his plan and his purpose. Can I tell you, when you wait on the Lord, all good things will come your way. Praise be to God. But the worst season of all, in my opinion, is the dry season. That dry season for me is it, it, just horrific amen praise be to god but the but once you come through that season i want to tell you as the songwriter said you're better you're wiser and you're stronger dry bones the word says hear the word of the lord this is what the sovereign lord says to these bones i will make breath enter you and you will come to life. Sometimes we're just like a sack of dry bones. We can't hear from God. We can't feel God. We don't understand what's going on around us. 
and from time to time, we all experience this dry season. I don't care what your office is. It doesn't matter what your title is. It doesn't matter how much money you have. We will have a dry season. And I can tell you a dry season is not a pleasant time to live in. But God just feels so far away from you. And if you really love the Lord, you're uncomfortable because you're accustomed to God walking with you and talking with you. You're accustomed to God holding your hand. You're accustomed to God moving in you and through you and using you for his glory. And here you are dry like a sack and nothing seems to be coming from you. Nothing seems to be getting in you. And you look up and you say, God, why have you left me? How many of you know sometimes God will leave us because he wants us to think about uh, what is already planted in us. He wants us to dig way down and pull out from our belly uh, all that he has poured into us. Uh, he wants us to recognize that we cannot live without him. We cannot survive without him because Every now and then, we get a little big-headed because God has been so good to us. Sometimes we forget from whence we came, and God has to give us a reminder that if it had not been for him on our side, we would not be where we are today. And so he puts us in a position of humility and humbleness and we have to bend our knees and say, God, I, I can't make it without you. Lord, please send down the power of the Holy Spirit that will lead and guide me into all truth. I'm empty, Lord, and need to be filled. Can I tell you, when you come out of that season of dryness, uh, you come out praising the Lord. Uh, you come out worshiping the Lord in spirit uh, and in truth. Uh, you come out better than you were when you went in. Uh, can I tell you, when you come through that season, uh, see, I know that season uh, because I've been through that season where I couldn't get a word from the Lord. Uh, but one day, uh, he said, that's enough. I think you learned your lesson, Sproul. I think you understand now where I'm trying to take you. I think you know, Sproul, what I want to do in your life. Praise be to God. And before I knew it, the water was pouring down. The word of God was spilling over. Can I tell you... Uh, while it's the most horrific season, can you imagine not feeling God? Can you imagine walking and dealing with all the chaos and confusion in this world without God? But can I tell you, he really hasn't left us. We just feel like he left us. He's not answering us as quick as he usually does. He's not pouring into us like he usually does. But praise be to God. He is on time. I'm closing now. Praise God. Seasons, both natural and spiritual, they take us through the life cycle over and over and over again. In essence, when you think about it, we're planting and watering, growing and dying to sin and living for Christ over and over again. It's critical that we notice the move of God in our spiritual seasons. They remind us that God is always at work in us and that the Holy Spirit is setting the pace as we move from one season to the next. Spiritual seasons are the natural rhythms or movements in our spiritual journey that flow through us as we continue to grow with him. Lord, I love growing with you. Unless we understand how seasons work in the kingdom of God, we can begin to feel a lack of control or a sense of ineffectiveness. And that leads to complacency. Praise be to God. And we know that is not the will of God. There are reasons for every season. The things we go through in life are not in vain. Our situations will not last forever. And if you are in a certain season of life, you can be confident that the season will come to an end 
at some point and begin to shout. Shout, shout, shout that God has brought you through. You can shout, I'm coming out, just like Diana Ross did. And this verse serves as a reminder that our circumstances will change. Whatever God tells you through his purpose, through his power, and through his provision to help you to achieve breakthrough in your life, follow him. You will get over your sorrows, and you'll get out of your valley. And whatever season of life you find yourself in, it will have a beginning, and I promise you, it will have an end. Hallelujah, praise be to God. There's always a reason for the season, and we will always be better for the journey. In, your, in the bishop's office, there is a plaque that reads, difficult roads often lead to beautiful destinations. Where we end up is often determined by how we handle the seasons in our lives. So be strong and of good courage and know that God is on your side. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance unto you and give you peace. God bless you today. Praise God. We thank God for those who were saved today. And now I want to speak a word to those who have been a little slack in your Christian walk with God. Maybe being away from the church. Maybe something happened that hurt you in the church. Maybe you just kind of lost your faith and your direction. I want to pray a prayer of rededication because you belong to God. God says I'm in covenant with those who gave their lives to me. Whatever it was, that stopped you from reading your Bible like you should, praying like you should. Yes, attending worship in any form that it's offered and you can enjoy God, doing God's will, being on fire for God as you used to when you first got saved. I want to pray and you pray this prayer of rededication. Then as the Bible says, go back to your first works. Go back to doing what God called you to do. He's going to restore you right now. Pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I need to be restored. Set me on fire as I used to be when I first gave you my life. I'm going back to my works. I'm coming back to you, Lord. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. And because I ask, and I believe today I thank you I am restored praise God hallelujah listen to those of you do you have a church home are you connected to a church and if not I would like to invite you to become a member of the Ark of Safety Christian Church whether you are local or you want to be a virtual member we welcome you to our family we are a Bible believing Bible teaching, Christ-centered and loving church. And I know that you will feel welcome whether you're here in these United States or in other places around the world where we have ARC members even outside of this country. We pray together. We'll meet on Zoom. We talk together. We make sure you get involved in the work of God where you are, but more importantly as your pastor, I feed you the word of God. So listen, if you pray the prayer of salvation or you rededicated your life to Jesus or you joined the church, we want to know. I want to know. Listen, even if you have a prayer request or I know the sermon bless you today, please let me know. Encourage us as well. Email me, bishopmuse at gmail.com, bishopmuse at gmail.com or text me at 240 240- 266-5005 I'd love to hear from you I would love to pray with you I'd love to welcome you to our family God wants you to have abundant life through Jesus and he wants you to have his best again I want to thank all of our church members first I thank you for all of these months of our obligation in covenant to tithe with your church giving your tithes and your gifts and your offerings to bless us 
so that we can continue to do the ministry and the work of the church. We thank God for you. I thank God for our long list of visitors who give to us and some give faithfully every week. I thank you. It helps us to continue to spread the gospel and to know that the church is not closed. We're still doing God's will. And for your convenience, as you know, or for those who may be on for the first time and you were blessed today and God led you to give to this ministry, there are three ways to give and they're on your screen. They're on your screen. Please do that. Please do that and give. Right now, ARC members, this is our giving time in Jesus' name. Worship God with your giving. Go into one of those meetings and give. God bless you all. I know you were blessed today in the name of Jesus. Don't forget, Bible study Tuesday night. We'll see you Bible study. Thank you again, Bishop Joanne Sproul, for delivering the powerful message. Oh, thank God for our seasons. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, you're going to have a blessed week. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Say this, this week will be a good week. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Don't log off yet. David's coming back. We're going to sing our way into the next week. God bless you and we'll connect real soon. My mind made up And I won't turn back Cause I won't see my Jesus Someday I've got my mind made up And I won't turn back Cause I won't see my Jesus Someday I've got my mind made up And I won't turn back Cause I won't see my Jesus Jesus someday Goodbye world Stay no longer with you Goodbye pleasures of sin Stay no longer with you I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life Made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life Goodbye world Stay no longer with you Pleasures of sin Staying along with you I made up my mind To go God's way The rest of my life Made up my mind Gotta go the rest of my life Goodbye world I stayed along with you Goodbye pleasures of sin Staying along with you I made up my mind To go God's way The rest of my life to go God's way the rest of my life I made up my mind to go His way the rest of my life I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my We invite you to join us each week for Sunday service at 9.45 a.m. and 4 p.m. Each Tuesday for Bible study at 7.30 p.m. And join us on our prayer call at noon each first and third Wednesday of the month. The number is 571-317-3122. And the access code is 752-015-709. You can also watch anytime on our YouTube channel, or on Facebook, or on our website at archofsafetychristianchurch.com.